thank you mustafa for the introduction and uh, thanks to everyone for coming so the topic of uh, today's talk will be integrated millimeter wave access and backhaul in 5g bandwidth partitioning and downlink analysis so this work has been uh, jointly done with uh, mehernas and uh, dr dilan uh, so before we start uh, so this talk will be mostly divided into two sections first we will be giving an overview of uh, millimeter wave integrated access and backhaul or in short iab architecture and we will see that what kind of research questions we can ask then we will be introducing our new analytical framework for iab and then we will discuss some key design insights that we can derive from there so let's first talk about the heterogeneous cellular networks or hetnets so we all know that the data demand is skyrocketing and network densification is one key solution to that so one way we can do that is to deploy more and more low power small cells to patch the covered dead zones of the macro base stations and this will improve the channel quality uh, observed by the user and hence we can achieve more and more data rate so if this solution were true then why we are not yet surrounded by small cells so uh, let 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 us first uh, consider a toy example so let's say that uh, there are how much like approximately 20 people in this room and if we consider a hot spot Uh, i mean if we consider a hot spot with these 20 people and we want to serve these users with a data rate of let's say 500 mbps which is a reasonable assumption given the target limit set by 5g uh, and we deploy a small cell at the center of this hot spot in this room so at the very least this small cell should be connected to the network core with a connection which can support the data rate of uh, 10 gbps now think about we are repeating this thing for all the seminar rooms and all the classrooms of the vt campus so definitely we are densifying our network but simultaneously we need to build a solution for the backhaul which is more likely to be a uh, high speed optical fiber to support this very high uh, gbps range data rate and uh, which has to be uh, i mean which is not uh, uh, an economic solution so the capacity bottleneck has definitely been shifted therefore from the radio interface towards the backhaul now what is the solution then the solution will be to replace these wired links by wireless links now we have been already doing that by microwave backhauling which is also known as fixed wireless backhaul and there has been efforts to build microwave backhaul solutions using ptp or point to point and point to multi point protocols in bands under 10 gigahertz those bands are licensed or unlicensed and there are some startups and companies which are completely focused on building these microwave wireless solutions but this microwave solution is not enough to support the gbps range data rate which 5g envisions so one key game changer can be millimeter wave communication because we all know that uh, with millimeter wave it is possible to achieve such high data rate over the links now millimeter wave fixed wireless is envisioned to be replacing the current wireless backhaul and it is going to be the first phase of the commercial rollout of 5g now the researchers have also found that millimeter wave can be a very potential solution for building high data rate access links as well 
Now, access by access links, we mean the wireless links that are established between a serving base station and a user. Now, if the same millimeter wave spectrum can be used both for backhaul and access, so why not we build an integrated access and backhaul where we use the same infrastructure and spectral resources for serving both the access and backhaul links. So 3GPP is currently studying this type of IAB architecture. People also call this architecture as self-backhauling. And uh, one of the major research projects in this line is Project AirGig, which is uh, currently undertaken by AT&T. So we now, regarding the design of IAB, we try to ask some research questions. For instance, Let's say that the anchored base station, the ba by the anchored base station we mean the base station which is wired to the network core. Uh, the anchor base station tries to provide wireless backhaul to N small cell base station which we call SBS. And uh, the, the, the backhaul bandwidth the anchored base station has is WB. So what the anchored base station or the ABS needs to do is to partition this WB into N shares. Now, what is the best way to do that? So, one, uh, so from here, basically, we can construct one optimization problem, that is, how to set these uh, n share values, which is denoted by omega i's, so that the total number of users who are receiving a target data rate row is maximized. So, we can further enhance this optimization problem by going one step further. Let's say we have the entire system bandwidth W and we first partition W into two halves. One is WA for access bandwidth and one is WB for backhaul bandwidth. Now this access bandwidth will be shared across all the base stations for serving the users in the access. And this backhaul bandwidth WB as we discussed in the previous slides with, with, will be further shared into N splits to serve the N small cell base stations in the backhaul. So the enhanced optimization problem is to select this partition fraction eta and this partition weights w omega 1 to omega n so that the number of users receiving the target data rate row is maximized. So in this way we can ask these two optimization questions. Uh, before we try to answer these questions through our model, we first have a look in what has been done so far in modeling IAB. So, so far, uh, there has been a poison point process based cellular network model for IAB where, where the base station has been modeled as a PPP and a fraction of base stations is assumed to have wired connection, which means they are anchored base station and the rest of the base stations are backhauled by these anchored base station wirelessly. One useful insight we get from here is that the performance gain we can obtain from this network by, sim by simply increasing the density of the base station of the anchored base station is equivalent to keeping the this fraction kappa of anchored base station low and densify the overall network. So these insights suggest that IAB might work for a network. Now what are the limitations of this uh, system model? First is that it is not possible really to answer the type of questions we just discussed in the previous slide regarding the bandwidth partitioning with such a model. And secondly, this PPP model is far from what the spatial setup of the users and base stations are considered in the 3GPP simulations. So we now introduce our uh, recently proposed analytical framework for IAB. So this is the illustrative overview of the network. So definitely by appearance it's a much simpler model than a PPP which, an, which is an infinite network. We can see it's a finite network model with a single macro cell and the macro cell is a circular region with the anchored base station we can see is sitting at the center of the circle and there are n hotspots which are again small circles which are uh, 
uniformly distributed at random in the macro cell. And on the center of each user hotspot, there is an SBS, and these SBS needs to be served over wireless backhaul link from the access base station. The access and the SBS base, the access base station and the small cell base stations are serving the users also in the access links. So now we go one level deep into the spatial setup of our model. So as as I said that the macro cell we considered is a circular region and the uh, and the n user hotspots which uh, are modeled as circle of radius rs and th those hotspots are located uniformly at random within this macro cell at the loca with the locations x1 to xn being uh, uh, being the center of these hotspots and at each hot hotspot center we have an sbs the number of users per hotspot we consider it to be fixed and if this m bar number of M bar is the fixed number of users per hotspot and these users are also uniformly distributed at random within the hotspots. So we now move to the propagation assumption. So we have already said that all the downlink transmissions are done in millimeter wave spectrum and uh, we assume that the base station uh, uh, transmits at uh, constant power spectral density P by W over system bandwidth W and we consider our system to be noise limited which is a very reasonable assumption for millimeter wave systems and uh, if n0 is the noise power spectral density then for a given link with some arbitrary bandwidth the snr received will be proportional to p by n0 w now for the blocking we assume that uh, millimeter wave links are subjected to blocking meaning that we need to consider the line of sight and non line of sight components explicitly into our analysis and for blocking we assume that each link undergoes iid blocking with uh, it being in los denoted by pr where r is the distance from the base station so so if a link distance increases the l the probability that the link will go into non line of sight increases by this assumption we now uh, consider the three SNR expressions, which will be important for our analysis. So we have uh, three different SNRs to consider. One is the SNR at the location of the SBS and related to the backhaul link. The second, uh, the second two SNRs are related to the access links. And uh, one is the access link uh, between the SBS and the user and the other is the access link between the ABS and the user. So, and we consider uh, the fading to be IID and the Nakagami fading. For the user association, we consider all the, base, all the small cell base stations operate in closed access, meaning that uh, if a user belongs to one hotspot, it, will, it can only connect to the SBS that is at its hotspot center. Uh, otherwise, it will connect to the ABS. So there is only two options for one user. And uh, we assume that uh, the user association is performed by the signaling in sub-6 gigahertz, which is analogous to the current LTE standard. So uh, let me just explain why we took this assumption, because uh, although millimeter wave is suitable for data transmission, uh, this type of uh, user, uh, the, the, this type of signaling which is required for user association when you need to broadcast the paging message in an omni omnidirectional pattern, we, uh, sub 6 gigahertz is a better choice rather than millimeter wave. In millimeter wave, if you want to do that, you, you need to do that by beam sweeping or some advanced techniques which are still under research. So that's why this assumption. And since we assumed sub-6 gigahertz signaling for the for user association, that's why due when we are defining the association event, as we can see in this slide, we didn't consider explicitly the LOS and NLOS for that signal. Uh, so we define the association event as uh, it, it's like a uh, it's like a binary decision: either a user connects to the SBS or the macro. And the decision is made by observing 
the power received over 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 some time window and averaged over fading and uh, we consider alpha to be the path loss exponent uh, for the sub 6 gigahertz broadcast channel next we define the coverage probability it's nothing but uh, so coverage the coverage event is nothing but a subset of the association event because in association we saw this epsilon equal to either 1 or 0 and for coverage uh, in, in addition to that we need to satisfy the corresponding SNR uh, the, the corresponding SNR should be greater than some threshold so we can see that for SBS coverage there has to be two conditions that needs to be simultaneously satisfied because the access link has to be in under coverage as well as the backhaul link but for the macro coverage we only need one condition which is the access link between the user and the ABS so uh, from this point as we proceed towards the a bit more details into our analysis the general idea of our analysis is to first condition on an SBS user pair which means that from the network we are sampling a user along with its hotspot center the hotspot center being at x and the user being at x plus u we, we, we perform our analysis with this conditioning and later we decondition first with respect to u and then with respect to x so that is the general idea of the analysis so regarding the resource allocation or the bandwidth splitting as we discussed in one of the introductory slides we are considering uh, the resource allocation in this way we first uh, have the system bandwidth w we split it into access and backhaul with the partition fraction eta and the access bandwidth will be equally shared across the load which means that if a base station is serving n, n users it will split the wa bandwidth equally across those n users over n access links and the backhaul bandwidth wb for sharing that we assume two partition policies one is the equal partition where WSS, WSX is the share of the entire backhaul partition that a base station at the location X will get. So for equal partition it's simply equal to WB by N because we are assuming N many hotspots in our uh, macro cell and for the load based partition this WSX will be proportional to the load on that particular small cell base station and we normalize with respect to all the loads across all the small cell base stations so now we move towards our main metric with respect to which we evaluate the performance of our system so before we do that first we define data rate and while defining data rate we assume that all the links achieve a Shannon capacity and uh, the data rate achieved in the backhaul link and in the two access links are defined as follows that is nothing but the w times log to 1 plus snr on that link just one additional interesting observation here is the second one that is the rate on the access link between the sbs and the user so we can see that there are two rate terms and there is a minimum operator before so why is that that is because the first term under the minimum operator is the data rate that could have been achieved if there was perfect backhauling. So now since that is not the case here, we see uh, and the rate a typical user will see will be upper bounded by the rate that is actually achieved in the backhaul link. So that's why the second term is appearing and the, act, uh, and the rate will be minimum of these two. So, that, so this is due to the backhaul constraint and now we define the rate coverage probability for a link with some arbitrary ba bandwidth w as the probability that the rate achieved on this link will be exceeding a target rate threshold or target data rate so we see that uh, this is actually the rate coverage is nothing but it's equivalent to the probability that the SNR on that link will be exceeding some threshold which is nothing but the coverage probability but what is the difference between coverage and rate coverage is the term rate threshold because within this rate threshold 
the interesting term is the WTIL data, where actually the load information will be captured. So that will differentiate the coverage analysis and the data analysis. We will see this thing later in more details. But we, the, the, ver the first key takeaway from the previous discussion is that for rate coverage, we need the expression of coverage probability. And since coverage is again a uh, subset of the association event, we first need to characterize what is the association probability. So in the SQL, we first derive the association probability, which is the first step towards the coverage. So as we said, we will be conditioning. So the first conditioning will be on the location of the hotspot center at X. And conditioned on that, we try to evaluate what is the probability that epsilon is equal to 1, which means that uh, the typical user connects to the, uh, connects to the small cell base station. So uh, we evaluate th th this, but one interesting takeaway from this analysis is that this conditioning was on the location of a hotspot center. But due to the symmetry of our problem, we have an angular symmetry due to the circular construction. That's why this conditioning can be reduced to only conditioning on the distance from the access base station or the center of the circle to the location of the small cell. So that is one interesting note here in this proof. Then we will move towards the proof of coverage probability, which nothing but builds on the previous proof we saw of association probability. We have to additionally consider the SNR being exceeding those SNR threshold into the probability computation. But before we go into that, I would first like to indicate that the total coverage is nothing but the summation of two individual coverage probabilities. So why is that so? Because as we said that one user has only two options, either it can connect to the hotspot center or it can go to the macro. So these two terms are reflected by these two terms in the summation. And as we said that it will be conditioned on the distance from the hotspot center to the macro cell, uh, macro cell center. Therefore, this x is conditioned and at the end we decondition with respect to the distance distribution of x. So, Sorry? Uh, the macro distribution thing. Hmm. Yes, yes. So, uh, so if we expand this term of coverage probability, we take the first term and then we expand it. So, see, uh, I mean, this term is related to the small cell coverage. Now the small cell coverage is, as we discussed before, two events need to be jointly satisfied. One is the backhaul link has to be under coverage and then the access link has to satisfy this coverage condition. But these two conditions are independent of each other according to our assumptions and therefore we can split these two into the product and then what we do is for each SNRs, as we can remember that the links can be either LOS or non-LOS. Therefore, these two terms can be again split into the summation of the, of the LOS and L N LOS probabilities. So that we do, and therefore, this will be the structure of the final expression. So now we move slowly towards the, our main goal of uh, deriving the rate coverage. So in the rate coverage uh, probability, what are the two terms uh, involved here? The two terms are again SBS rate coverage and MBS rate coverage. As we saw in coverage as well, we had two terms. But uh, here we don't actually uh, put the conditioning and deconditioning with respect to x in this expression. But we, we, we will, uh, I mean, that conditioning we can easily handle in the two terms separately. Uh, as we know that taking expectation with respect to x and expectation goes into individual terms because it's a summation. So now let's focus on the second term, which is a bit relatively easier than the first term because in the first term we had two conditions to jointly satisfy. And also the interesting thing is that the second term, which is the macro rate coverage, it has nothing to do with what kind of partition policies we choose. So that's why this computation will be same. So 
So it's nothing but the rate, uh, the, the data rate exceeding this threshold row. And if we expand this data rate, as we have uh, shown the expression before in, in the previous slide, uh, we can see that uh, this leads to a coverage probability expression. And this coverage probability evaluated at certain threshold. And this, this threshold has two additional random variables there. So what are these two random variables? And these basically differentiate the coverage and rate analysis. So, so in order to get the actual rate coverage, we need to track down the distribution of these two random variables. So what are they? These two variables, the first one, the NX, ABS, it, it is the contribution of the contribution of, on the based uh, ABS load from the users, those belong to the hotspot of the typical user. So the typical user belongs to the hotspot at X. So now how many users from these hotspots are actually connecting to the macro base station? So that variable is represented by NX ABS. And what is NO ABS? NO ABS is nothing but the total number of users who are going to the macro base station from all the other hotspots except the hotspot at X. So these are the two components of the entire macro load. So we can see that the macro, macro load will be composed of summation of these two variables. So these are the two variables of interest here. Similarly, if we particularly consider the load based backhaul partition policy, we will now see that two more load, vet, load random variables are popping out. Uh, so here if we, if we again uh, use substitute the rate expressions that we derived, that, that, that we showed under the minimum operator, this will turn out to be like this. And obviously from here we can proceed towards the more uh, concise expression, but the main objective of showing this step is to show that these there are again two load variables coming into the picture and these two will be further there in the final expression as well and these two load variables correspond to the first one the nx ab sbs is the sbs load at the user hotspot it means that how many users from the user hotspot at x are connecting to the small cell base station which is residing at the hotspot center and no sbs which is the sum of the total SBS loads across all the other hotspots except the hotspot where the typical user belongs. So NX SBS and NX ABS and NO SBS and NO ABS are kind of related. One is those first pair is related to the load information from the, o, the typical user's own hotspot and the other are related to sum of the sum load information of all the rest of the hotspots. So these two are uh, therefore related. Now, what we have done in this work is to characterize these four load variables and, uh, this, and this characterization is completely new because uh, the load characterization for the PPP based methods is completely based on some uh, a different framework. So, so let's go into the expression we have for the, uh, for the first pair. So the first pair is NX ABS and NX SBS. And as we, as we have said that we have conditioned on the location of the hotspot center to which the typical user belongs. So these two expressions will be conditioned on, on X, first of all. And uh, these two variables, and these two actually follow a bino uh, binomial random variable with parameters m minus 1 and am, and the other being m minus 1 and as. So we can, uh, I mean, uh, the, the idea of the proof was, uh, can be intuitively explained as follows, that when a, when a typical user resides in a hotspot which is located at x, the other users are still independently trying to connect to the SBS at the center or the ABS. So for each user, this is a Bernoulli random variable. 
and then if we take the summation over these Bernoulli random variables, this will lead to this uh, this binomial distribution as we have observed here. So the AMX uh, calculate this uh, which quantity? Uh, okay, so the AMX is the probability with which uh, a randomly selected user at the hotspot at X will go to the macro station. And ASX is the one minus of that, so the complement of that. And uh, this blocking effect is independent. Yes, as we said that uh, this uh, this 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 decision is done over a sub six gigahertz signaling. So this is not uh, related to the data signaling. So that's why. So obviously we can extend the analysis for millimeter wave based signaling as well, but this would. Nothing but complicate the analysis. We have to take uh, different cases of LOS and NLOS and have to study them individually. Now, next we study the other two pieces of the load, which is the which is due to the all which is due to all the other users in the other hotspots. Now, we can exactly characterize them them by uh, by noting the fact that uh, first of all, before before I go into the main result, let's just uh, uh, discuss what observations we can make from here. So, since NO ABS and NO SBS is the contribution of the load information from all the other hotspots, we can basically write them as a summation over n minus one load variables, which are related to those hotspots. And these load variables will be conditioned on the location of the typical user's hotspot location at X. These will be IID random variables. And these can be written as the summation of them. And the actual distribution of it will be expressed as a n minus 1 discrete uh, convolution of those variables. But this, is, uh, but this is not that much computationally efficient. So instead of doing that, we resort to a CLT based, I mean central limit theorem based approach where first we characterize the mean and variance of these terms under summation and then we invoke CLT to approximate the exact PMF with a Gaussian distribution. And uh, as CLT says that as n grows bigger, this this approximation should be very close to what we expect in the exact analysis. But surprisingly, we see that when we simulate the actual network by Monte Carlo simulation, and uh, then we used our CLT-based results uh, to, uh, to evaluate it analytically, we saw that even for a very moderate value of n, we here we choose n equal to 10, meaning that there are n ho 10 hotspots in a macro cell. The, we can at least visually cannot differentiate between the simulation and what we have got through our analysis. So that is one interesting fact. The another interesting fact is the existence of the uh, an optimal point. So before I, uh, so, so I, 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 I should explain the premise of this experiment. So what we did is we fixed the bandwidth and we varied the bandwidth partition fraction from 0 to 1. So eta equal to 0 on one extreme means that there is no backhaul. Everything, if all, the ba all the bandwidth is allotted to the axis. And eta equal to 1 means all bandwidth is allocated to backhaul, which is a trivial case. And we can expect that there will be no coverage, because there is no access bandwidth at all. So in between that, when we vary eta, we can see that for both partition strategies, we find an optimal partition fraction for which the rate coverage probability is maximized. By the way, we have also fixed in this experiment the rate threshold of 50 Mbps and n equal to 10, I have already said, and the number of users per hotspot was fixed to 5. So this is the setup of this experiment. So we see the existence of the optimum for both the load-based and equal partition. And the optimum is dependent on the choice of partition policy, the bandwidth, 
Now we compare these two strategies in this figure. So we, we plot for the same set of parameters the two different bandwidth partition strategies in this single figure. And we see that uh, the load based partition policy is giving better rate coverage for both of these two system bandwidths. But there is one interesting thing that uh, this difference in performance gain, we can see that it is diminishing towards the higher system bandwidth. Also, we should keep in mind that uh, implementation wise, the load based partition is much more complex than the equal partition because in the load based partition, the ABS needs to know what is the load on each of the individual small cells. So the small cells need to constantly or periodically update their load information by some feedback or something. But on the other hand, in equal partition, the base station just blindly allocates the backhaul bandwidth equally. And uh, so, uh, so, there, so although we can see that rate, rate coverage wise load based partition is better, equal partition may be implementation wise better because it, it, it has less signaling over it. So there exists some, some, some trade-off regarding the performance and the implementation complexity in this type of IAB networks. The load means it's just a number of users, right? Yes. So now the question will be how frequently should you update? So, this so you have some, at least some overhead with respect to the equal, right? And here is another very interesting result we obtained from this analysis. Uh, so what we have done here is we fix the bandwidth this time, but uh, we vary the number of users per hotspot, meaning that we actually are increasing the system load, keeping all, everything constant. So the obvious trend we should observe is the rate coverage should fall, because we are not investing into increasing the resource, we are just increasing the load. But the most interesting part is that beyond some value of m bar, we can see that the optimality, the optimal point has been shifted towards eta equal to zero. So what does that mean? As I have said that eta equal to zero means no backhaul, only access. And no backhaul means all the small, all the small cell base stations are just sitting idle because we are not actually feeding them any bandwidth. So only the macro base station is serving all. And we see surprisingly that for for this value of m equal to 15, which is equivalent to some high amount of network load, this IAB architecture is outperformed by a traditional macro only network. So this actually reveals a very interesting question that these are IAB networks performance are limited by some amount of cell load, meaning that does there exist any critical cell load volume beyond which the IAB doesn't perform as it should be and its performance is dominated by a much more simpler uh, single tier macro only network with no small cell. So finally, uh, we have checked another, another result. So one assumption we made in our system model is that the number of users per hotspot, we assumed it to be fixed. Now, Initially, it might appear to be a bit unreasonable because uh, the load is obviously a fluctuating number. So what we did here, we replaced the fixed number of users in each hotspot in, an, in another experiment by Poisson number of users. Meaning that initially if we assume m bar is equal to 5, fixed, on the other experiment we assumed that each uh, the number of users in each hotspot is IID Poison with mean five, and we did the similar thing with um, some some more number of users or the more uh, uh, higher value of the Poison mean. Surprisingly, we see that the trends are very similar, but from the complexity of the expression, the fixed number of the, the expression we have for the fixed number of users 
it is very it is very reasonable because uh, it, 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 they are reasonably simple because even if you consider a poisson with mean 5 your the range at which your uh, uh, your random variable will vary will be at least from 0 to 15 so you need to you need to calculate the rate coverage probability and weight them with the corresponding probability of poisson up to 15 where you you can if you consider 5 and fixed, you are done with. Uh, I mean, you are done with one expression, right? So, so that's why com computationally fixed user is better. But we can see that we are not actually losing much by this uh, 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 from these trends. So, so coming towards the end, what are the key takeaways of the analysis? Novelty-wise, uh, this is the first uh, 3GPP-inspired stochastic geometry-based framework for any IAB-type setup. And uh, we tried to answer how efficiently back backhaul resources can be partitioned across different small cells. And we found that the load-based uh, backhaul bandwidth partition provides a better rate coverage from a simple equal, weight parti equal partitioning. But there is a trade-off between implementation and performance. Now, is there, is there a fundamental limit of IAB-enabled networks? We found a very interesting result that uh, beyond some critical value of cell load, the performance of IAB is actually dominated by a single-tier macro-only network. And uh, are, the, are our assumptions sufficient? We saw that uh, even with fixed number of uh, user per hotspot, we are getting the similar trend with respect to a poison number of users. So at least, new, new, I mean, uh, according to those numerical results, it seems to be a reasonably good assumption. So that concludes the discussion. And uh, these are the few references. Uh, most of the contents in this presentation uh, refers back to our recent submission which is av available archive. And it is worth interesting to check uh, 3GPP's technical report on IAB. And uh, this work is also a continuation of the series of works we have been doing regarding the modeling of clustered hat nets.